Welcome back to another episode of Whiskey University, Jay Bradley Craft Whiskey Boys. But today we're talking about Irish versus Scotch and at the end of this video I'm going to give you my take on the best way to buy an Irish whiskey and the age and the other variables and the same for Scotch. So stick around and let's begin and go through both of them. Right, so right out of the gate I want to talk about the taste of the two whiskies. It's really important and I'm going to touch on it even more as we go through the video because you'll, you'll get all the pieces as we go. So Irish whiskey from a taste perspective, uh, it is a much smoother whiskey, especially when it's younger. And that lends itself because of the triple distillation. Uh, Ireland is a bit of a warmer climate than Scotland, which we'll touch on in a bit. So there's a lot of these pieces that are written on the board that I'm gonna go through and explain in detail. But uh, an Irish whiskey is traditionally much smoother, specifically when it's younger. Uh, that's our single malts I'm talking about. When we talk about our single pot stills, they're also obviously smoother, creamier uh, than the single malts. They have a, a completely different mouthfeel. They're much more oily across the palate. Um, phenomenal whiskies. You must try a single pot still if you never have. Same for the single malt in Ireland. In Scotland, a single malt, a little bit different, bit more spicy, a uh, bit more complex. Takes a little bit, it has to get a little bit older before it becomes more rounded and, uh, and more full bodied. Like an Irish whiskey, for example, like a red breast single pot still, or even if you take a 12 year old Irish single malt, you re at 12 years old, it's drinkable, it's palatable, and it's quite smooth. Whereas if you take a 12 year old Scottish whiskey, it's gonna be a little bit too harsh and a bit much more ethanol for, for most people's palates. So really you wanna get an, a Scottish whiskey past about the 16 year mark to like an Irish 12, just based on the fact that the Irish is triple distilled traditionally and the Scottish is double distilled and the warmer climates, warmer versus a colder climate. All right, so the first thing to point out, obviously, is that Irish whiskey, uh, Irish invented whiskey, um, they then brought it up to Scotland through a, a little area that was owned by the Irish, which is now part of the Inner Hebrides, uh, which is called Dalryda. They brought it up, Scotland then learned how to distill and make whiskey from Irish, and they've uh, gone on and do a phenomenal job. The Irish kind of dominated the world whiskey market all the way through to the early 1920s, and then, of course, in the, after World War II in the 1940s, Scotland took over, and, then, and now it's known as kind of the most popular, most widely sold whiskey. Irish isn't. Key difference between the two of them, traditionally Irish is triple distilled. It's more expensive to triple distill, hence back in the 1800s when the Irish was dominating the world, it was the gold standard in whiskey. And Scotch traditionally double distills because back then, believe it or not, Scotch was actually a cheaper alternative to an Irish whiskey. Uh, today there's obviously phenomenal Scotches and really more mature and, and really good single malts. But back then, when they were both learning how to distill properly through the 1800s when it really became a more industrialized type of product, uh, Irish triple distilled because it was more expensive to do it and it created a better product, so they thought. So traditionally triple distilled but not always, there's definitely some double distillation going on in Ireland up at Cooley, uh, in Dundalk they do double distillation and there is triple distillation going on in Scotland at the likes of Ockintoshan, uh, I believe Springbank does one with the Hazelburn. So not always double distilled but majority of the time it's double distilled, not always triple distilled but majority of the time it is. So that's important, now why that's important is in triple distillation it's, uh, you're basically smoothing out the whiskey a little bit further than from a double distillation. You're taking it one more time, it, gets, it comes cleaner, it matures a little bit faster, uh, which, which kind of will lead me down into one of these towards the end. Uh, it matures a bit quicker um, than it would if it's double distillation. So in a double distilled whiskey, you want to wait till it's a little bit older. In a triple distilled, you can drink it when it's a little bit younger. Now, in regards to barley, what I'm talking about today, for want of any argument and, and people, keyboard warriors down below in the, uh, in the comments, the one thing I'm talking about today for scotch is single malt scotch. We're not talking about blends. We're not talking about anything other than a single malt scotch. And in Irish, we want to talk about single malt Irish and single pot still. Irish has two types of whiskey that obviously we have blends, we all do, there's grain, there's all these other types of variations. Single malt is predominantly what Scot Scotland's known for and Irish is known for single malt as well and also single pot still. What single pot still is? Single malt is effectively 100% malted barley. So you take the barley off the grass or at, from the grass and it's basically what we would call unmalted barley. It's just barley, fresh barley. We take that wet it, germinate it, so it starts to sprout. So you put, you dry, you put it in a kind of a nice warm room, uh, nice and wet, dark, and it starts to sprout. Once it sprouts, it creates starches and sugars, which we can then ferment into alcohol. So you must do that to be able to make whiskey, period. You must malt, right? So that's what, how whiskey always was. Ireland, right up until the 1600s, 1700s, did it this way, and it was invented back in the 1300s. Um, so you germinate, you turn it into what we call malted barley, you dry it out so you've got the starches and the sugars and then you make it. Scotland does 100% malted barley, so does Ireland in our single malts. 
The difference is a pot still whiskey from Ireland, which a lot of people know as this is one of them here, the, uh, the Green Spot Chateau Lovo Barton, that's a single pot still whiskey. And what that is, is when Back in the day, Ireland uh, effectively as a tax dodge, they, uh, they, were, they were obviously, Ireland used to be uh, owned and controlled by the Crown, by, by uh, the UK, and they used to tax the amount of alcohol in the bottle and, and Ireland started to bootleg to America and they just had to figure out how can we stop them bootlegging the whiskey and make sure we get all our taxes. So instead they started taxing the farmers, taxing the actual malt, because that's what whiskey was made from, 100% malted barley. So they said, well, we just tax the malt and they can't get around, they have to pay us our taxes. So then Ireland started an invention where they basically started using some of the unmalted. Now, obviously you have to use malt because that malt has the starches and the sugars in it because it's, that's what's happened, whereas the unmalted doesn't. But Ireland started you know, experimenting 60% malt, 40% unmalted, and effectively came up with this beautiful recipe of a pot still whiskey, which has got unmalted and malted barley. Now, I know that's a long explanation, but it's important that you know, because that's the difference. Only Ireland does pot still. It's not, you can't find it in Scotland, and it is a completely different style of whiskey. It's much more creamy, has a completely different flavor profile. If you've never tried a pot still, single pot still whiskey, you have to try it. It's a phenomenal whiskey, uh, much like obviously single malt from Ireland and Scotland, they're both phenomenal. So that's that point. All right, so now I just want to talk about the wood. Uh, obviously, wood lends itself to a large percentage of the flavor of the whiskey that's in the bottle. Um, you know, depending on the whiskey itself, how long it's sat in the wood, uh, how many times the wood's been used, it's, it, lends itself to a huge factor. Some will say up to 80% of the flavor in the bottle. It can be up as high as 95% uh, if it's sat in the wood for long enough uh, in a virgin oak barrel and it's in a warm climate for 20 plus years, but it can also be only 30% of the flavor if it's the wood's been used so much that the wood has no more left to give. So wood is really important. The cask it's in is super important, which obviously this cask here, a whiskey barrel, lends itself massively to what happens to that whiskey when it goes into the bottle. So in Ireland, we can use any type of wood. In the legislation, in the rules, uh, it just says any wood. So we can use hardwood such as cherry wood, apple wood, mulberry. Uh, obviously, oak is one of the best for maturing whiskey. In Scotland, they can only use oak. So in Scotland, they're, they're limited purely to oak. In Ireland, we can use a, a range of different woods to try and get different types of flavor profiles into the bottle. So that's important. It's really a whole other video. The barrel is so important to the flavor of the whiskey, as I've said, uh, that we've got a, an entire video for it. So we can actually link it up here in the right corner. And then at the end, we can kind of give you a link directly to it at the end of this video, because it is important to understand how the barrel influences a whiskey, because there's so many variables that are really important to understand. It's not just about age of the whiskey. Never get confused, never get bought in by the marketeers of, oh, this whiskey's 12, this is 18, this is 24. That plays, that's one seventh of what actually goes into maturing a whiskey. So uh, stay to the end, you can have a look at that video. Okay, so when we go into climate a little bit, Ireland is a little bit lower in the equator than Scotland. Uh, we, there is a, the Gulf Stream that comes up obviously from like the Gulf of Mexico up past the Caribbean and the Bahamas and right up to the, to the base of Ireland. And it goes right up past Ireland and up past Scotland as well. And that's why Scotland and Ireland are so rainy and so green because it, it obviously gets cold, but you've got this warm current that doesn't allow it to snow as often until you get right to the top of Scotland. And of course they get a lot of snow up there. But Scotland is traditionally colder, even the bottom of Scotland is higher than the top of Ireland. So if you go to the bottom of Ireland, the maturation that happens down there in that warmer climate, because it's a triple distilled whiskey, because of the different types of barrels, it can mature quicker. Not always, but it can mature sooner. Uh, and, and it's not just heat that makes it mature. Heat gives more influence from the from the barrel into the whiskey, because obviously the, the warmer it is, the more the, the, um, the whiskey's gonna go in and out of those staves of the barrel. But uh, it does round out a whiskey a little bit quicker and give more more influence. So that's important because if you're finishing a whiskey, say a whiskey's palatable and it's ready to go at seven years old uh, in Ireland, you could stick it in a finishing cask and get a really hot summer and get so much influence from a sherry or a, or some or a rum or a, a port barrel that literally by the year eight years old, it's tasting like something that's been sitting in sherry or rum or port up in Scotland for four or five years. So it's important to note that the climate does play a big factor. All right, and, and then obviously important to understand, and I've said it before in this video already, is that Ireland, Irish whiskies can be enjoyed while they're a bit younger versus Scottish whiskies or single malts. You do want them to get a bit older. If you taste an eight-year-old or 12-year-old Irish or Scottish single malt, 
it's going to be a little bit harsher. We did it. We did a video before with the Hazel Burn, which is a Scottish single malt. Uh, it, it was lightly peated, but they didn't they didn't peat it themselves. I think it came from the barrels that it previously sat in. But that was 10 years old, and it was phenomenal. And normally, a 10 year old Scottish whiskey isn't phenomenal. But what the difference is, is this was a triple distilled. Uh, we did a video. They can probably link that here as well, uh, where like it was a, one of the top best gifts to buy for somebody else for 50. It was a Hazel Burn Scottish whiskey, and it was phenomenal at 10 years old. But it was triple distilled. Uh, so that's important and, that, and it was also in Campbelltown which is lower down on the uh, towards the equator versus right up the top in the highlands so traditionally Irish whiskey at 12 years old like a red breast 12 years old comes into its own in a phenomenal way specifically because it's matured down in County Cork right down the bottom of Ireland it gets a bit better weather down there versus if you go up to Orkney in Scotland right up the top where Highland Park is from it's so cold up there it's just gonna take longer to get that barrel influence and that maturation happening so a 12 year old Scottish whiskey and a 12 year old Irish whiskey from Cork versus Highland Park and Orkney they're drastically different whiskies. Um, so you have to take that into account. You can enjoy an Irish Younger. Scotch, when it gets older, it's so amazing. You really have to try a mature Scotch. Uh, over 16, 18, 18 years old in a Scottish whiskey is just, uh, it's like mother's milk. It's, a, it's heaven's drop. You have to try that, but it does need those extra few years versus Irish being triple distilled and in a warmer climate, it doesn't as much. Okay, and then enzymes. And just to touch on this, Ireland can add enzymes, which means we can speed up the fermentation process. It doesn't really change the flavor profiles a lot. People can argue either way. It doesn't do a lot. But in Scotland, it's a bit more traditional. They're not allowed to add enzymes. It does take longer to ferment. Um, so those are really just some differences. Um, they're both great whiskies. You've got to try both. If you're trying a Scotch, try to go 16 to 18 or plus if your budget will allow for it. If you're going Irish, uh, we, there's an Irish whiskey called the Whistler, seven-year-old. That is phenomenal. The Blue Note, it won best whiskey in the world under 12 years old as a single malt and it was only seven. So in Ireland, seven years old, if it's done right with the right finishing barrels during one of our good summers, you can have a phenomenal whiskey. In Scotland, you're gonna to wanna to wait till it's past that 16 year old, in my opinion. Some people will argue with that, please put it in the comments. I have no problem with going back and forward and debating. This is just my taste profile and my opinion. Scotland needs a little bit longer. Ireland, you can drink a little bit younger because of that factor. So like I said, if you like it, subscribe. We're gonna do more of these. These are really for people that don't have vast knowledge of whiskey and they're wanting to learn a little bit more. It's not obviously for whiskey experts that know everything. Uh, this is for people that are trying to understand the difference between Scotch and Irish. Subscribe, like, and comment.